live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. Let's go back in time 10 years to the 2011 offseason. The Philadelphia Eagles, fresh off of making the postseason, made some big splashes in free agency. They got Pro Bowl defensive end Jason Babin. They got one of the best cornerbacks in the game in Namdi Asmawa. They got Pro Bowl running back and Wildcats star Ronnie Brown. They even got a firefighter to play guard. And to back up Michael Vick, they signed Vince Young, the two-time Pro Bowler and the 2006 Offensive Rookie of the Year. Despite being the backup quarterback, Young was feeling revved up and immediately proclaimed the Eagles as the dream team. Obviously, this backfired in spectacular fashion. Everything went haywire as a team that lots of people were projecting as Super Bowl champions went 8-8 eight and, eight and imploded. And Young, who appeared in six games, played terribly, throwing four touchdowns and nine interceptions, and never playing in the NFL again. When the backup quarterback is making such claims, it's kind of hysterical, especially when the team fails to live up to expectations and the quarterback in question looks like garbage. But what you might not know is that roughly 30 years before Young made those infamous comments, another backup quarterback was feeling a little bit ambitious, only for it to backfire. In 1983, Chargers backup Ed Luther called his team the greatest offense ever assembled. And spoiler alert, it was not. And this is the story behind the debacle. Before I talk about the comments in question, we need some context to understand just who Ed Luther is, and how the Chargers were looking offensively prior to those comments. Our story really begins in 1978, when the Chargers hired former Cardinals head coach Don Coryell to the same position. For years, San Diego had a pretty poor offense. Prior to Coryell's hiring, the last time the Chargers had an offense that finished in the top half of the league in points scored was all the way back in 1971. There were quite a few seasons where they placed inside the bottom three. However, almost immediately under Coryell, that changed. During the first season, the Chargers finished 6th in points scored, and I should know that Coryell came in midway through. Once the players really got his system, you could sense that something special was brewing, as over the final three games in 1978, the Chargers scored an incredible 122 points. What followed was a stretch where the Chargers were one of the best teams in football, and were one of the most fun teams in the league to watch. Led by future Hall of Fame quarterback Dan Fouts, future Hall of Fame wide receiver Charlie Joyner, arguably the best receiver in football at the time in John Jefferson, and future Hall of Fame tight end Kellen Winslow, the Chargers were an unstoppable force when they had the ball. They were second in points scored in 1979, fourth in 1980, and first in 1981 and 1982. For some perspective on just how good they were offensively, in 1982, because of the strike, they only played nine games. The Chargers scored 288 points for an average of 32 points per game. If you took their 288 points scored and placed it in 1981, when they played a full 16-game season, it still wouldn't finish inside the bottom five of the league, and the 82 Chargers played half the number of games. That is insane. And entering the 1983 season, the Chargers seemed to be picking up right where they left off. The defense was bad, and that was a common theme under Coriel, but over the first four games, the Chargers scored 101 points for an average of over 25 per game. Yes, the Chargers were 1-3, but you couldn't blame the offense for that as they already have the number one offense in the AFC at the quarter pole. And in week five, as they took on the New York Giants, their already high scoring average was about to get even higher. October 2nd, 1983. It's week five and the Chargers are traveling across the country to the Meadowlands to take on the New York Giants. Aside from the fact that this is the first time the Chargers have ever played a game at Giants Stadium, and aside from the fact that the Chargers have never won a game on the Giants home field, this is a pretty important game for them. The Chargers were one in three and the last time any team started 1-4 and four made it to the postseason was all the way back in 1976 during the Bicentennial, when the Pittsburgh Steelers won the AFC Central after a 1-4 and four start. Of the 64 teams to make it to the postseason since then, none of them were 1-4 and four after 5, so if the Chargers wanted to have any chance of making it to the playoffs, they needed to win this game. Keep in mind that the Chargers were going up against a Giants team that was 8th in the league in defense last year, and was comfortably in the top half of the league in a ton of categories. They were 7th in yards allowed, 6th in passing yards allowed, and second and first downs allowed. And they were coming off of a Monday Night Football game where they allowed just three points, forced four turnovers, and held the Packers to a mere 53 rushing yards. I talked about that game in a previous video of mine, so if you want to learn more about that blowout, then click the card in the upper right corner. And I bring all of this up because the Chargers, offensively at least, completely torched the Giants and picked them apart. The tone was set right away when not even two plays into the game, Fouts got the Chargers into Giants territory. That drive ended with a field goal. In fact, San Diego's first three drives ended in points, and following a Chuck Muncie touchdown run from a yard out, the Chargers were already up 13-0 midway through the first quarter. Two touchdown passes by Fouts in the second quarter, with the first being to Charlie Joyner from 13 yards out, and the second being to Kellen Winslow from 16 yards out, extended San Diego's lead. 
The Chargers led it 27-10 at one point in the second quarter and led it 27-17 at the half. The Giants didn't allow more than 27 in any game in 1982, and here they were, allowing 27 at the half to this high-powered offense, alongside 18 first downs and 256 total yards of offense. But as great as Fouts was playing, it was about to be the backup's time to shine. That backup quarterback, Ed Luther. Luther was drafted by the Chargers in the fourth round of the 1980 NFL Draft, and over the past three seasons had served as Fouts' primary backup. He mainly came in mop of duty and didn't do a whole lot. Over those three seasons, he was actually pretty bad, completing just 50% of his passes while throwing no touchdowns and three interceptions, and posting a passer rating of 32.4, which is worse than if he did nothing but spike the ball to the ground on every single play. But now he was in a high-pressure situation, as after Fouts suffered an injury after getting hit by none other than Lawrence Taylor, arguably the greatest defender who ever played the sport, it was time for Luther to come in and win the game. As for how Luther played, well, he was fine. It was a mixed bag, which considering his sample size over the last three seasons, is a pretty solid outing for him. He made some mistakes, like on his second play of the game when he completely botched the snap and when he threw an interception, but he did a lot of good things as well. He made some nice third down throws, completed over 69% of his passes, and fit the ball into some tight windows. Here is one of those great throws that he made, when on 3rd and 11, he hit Charlie Joyner on the out route for the first down. The Chargers scored a touchdown on the next play. This is a throw that easily could be a pick 6 if it's timed incorrectly and the corner jumps the route, but this was really well done by Luther. While San Diego's defense was Swiss cheese and it tells all this time, as they allowed 34 points to get the Giants to tie it up late in the 4th quarter, the Chargers wound up winning in the end. They did it off of this 34-yard touchdown run by Chuck Muncie, as in a thrilling, high-scoring affair, San Diego won it 41-34. Now, Luther wasn't spectacular by any means, as he only finished with a passer rating of 57.9, which was well below the league average by nearly 20 points. But sometimes, the numbers do lie, and Luther did what he had to do. It was a tough situation that he was thrown into, and he got the job done and preserved the win, even if his defense was doing everything in their power to prevent it from happening. And in the post-game press conference, Luther was thrilled with the result of the game. But maybe he took his enthusiasm one step too far. Luther started off the press conference by saying that he had all the confidence in the world in his skills, and that he had an even greater confidence in his teammates. Pretty standard stuff, and what you'd expect to hear after a situation like this. Now, maybe at this point, you follow it up with something like, my teammates do a great job at making my life easier. Or when you have a group as talented as this, it's a lot of fun going out there. Or this offense is really good, and we all believe in each other and know what we're capable of. All of these are fine options. But Luther decided not to do that. Oh no. He didn't just go one step further, he went about 10,000 steps further. Because later in the press conference, Luther said, This is the greatest offensive team that has ever taken the field. That's right. In the over 60 year history of the NFL at this point, the 1983 Chargers, this very team, was the greatest offensive team of all time. Now there's a few things about this statement that we need to address. Number one, the Chargers were not even the best offensive team in the NFL that season at the time. Far from it, in fact. Now, San Diego was still really good, and they had scored 142 points through five weeks, but that was fifth in the NFL. That was still behind Washington, Green Bay, Dallas, and San Francisco. And the Niners had scored 22 more points than San Diego had, almost a full game's worth. Not sure how you can be the best offense in NFL history, but you're not even top four in your own season. But there's a bigger, more important thing about this statement that's ridiculous. It was made by the backup quarterback. If this was made by Coriel or Fouts or someone like that, fine. But this was not just the backup quarterback, but a backup quarterback that had thrown a grand total of zero career touchdown passes. Even in this game against the Giants, which was probably the best game of his career at this point, his passer rating was 57.9. After your very first game where you're receiving actual meaningful playing time, for you to come out and call this team the greatest offensive team ever assembled, as though Ed Luther is commanding the Avengers of offense, is insane. I get what Luther was trying to do here and I admire his confidence in himself and his teammates. But come on, this might be worse than the Dream Team comment, simply because at least Young had actually accomplished stuff in his NFL career. He made the playoffs, he made multiple Pro Bowls, and had some big accolades to his name. Luther had never thrown a touchdown pass before. Those are some pretty lofty statements. And unsurprisingly, these comments would backfire in a massive way. Alright, so now we have the proclamation that the Chargers are the greatest offensive team in NFL history. Doesn't matter if it's Dan Fouts or Ed Luther or the random fan pulled from the nosebleeds at Jack Murphy Stadium. This team will score on you at will. However, Fouts was completely banged and battered up. Not only did he have an injury to his left wrist, and not only did he have an injury to his right thumb, but he had an injury to the rotator cuff in his right shoulder. 
This meant that Ed Luther was going to have a chance to back up his comments. He was going to take command of the offense and had the lofty goal of trying to bring San Diego to the postseason for the fifth straight year. Don Coryell had never missed the postseason when he was San Diego's coach from day one of the season, and he didn't want that streak to end. No pressure, Ed. And as you can probably expect, with Luther under center, the Chargers were not good. He got his first ever start in Week 8 against the Denver Broncos. Even though the defense for once stepped up and only allowed 14 points, the Chargers still lost, as they could only muster up 6. Luther threw no touchdowns and 3 interceptions, completed just over 45% of his passes, averaged an abysmal 4 yards per pass attempt, and finished the game with a pass rating of 31. The following week, in a Monday Night Football game against Washington, the Chargers lost 27-24 as Luther threw 6 interceptions. Somehow he finished with a pass rating of 61.3 which is the second highest passer rating in NFL history for any quarterback to throw at least six picks. His struggles would continue the following week as the Chargers fiddled the Pittsburgh Steelers by a final score of 26-3, as Luther completed less than 50% of his passes while throwing no touchdowns and an interception. Luther was dumbfounded about this. As he said after the game, I can't imagine we came away from here with just a field goal, considering the offensive personnel we have. And after a win against the Cowboys and a loss against the Cardinals, Fouts was ready to return. So over that five-game stretch that Luther played in, the Chargers went 1-4. Luther completed barely 50% of his passes, while throwing four touchdowns and 14 interceptions for a pass rating of 49.4. For some perspective, if we're just counting that stretch, Luther would have finished with the worst pass rating in the league. He threw a pick in each of his five starts in that stretch, and just based off of that, would have been on pace to throw 45 interceptions, which would have smashed the NFL record of 32 set by Franz Harkinton in 1978. So much for the greatest offense ever. As you can probably guess, Luther didn't last too much longer in the NFL after that. What started as a season with so much promise for San Diego became a major disappointment. San Diego finished the season with a 6-10 record, which was the first time since 1976 that they finished the season below 500. After years of being near the top of the AFC, this season signaled the beginning of the end. Luther would get to play a bit down the stretch, and even started one more game, with this one being a 30-14 loss against the Los Angeles Raiders but the supposed best offense in NFL history finished the season with 358 points scored, or an average of 22 per game, ranking 12th in the league. In his 11 seasons as the head coach at the time, including his time with the Cardinals, it was the lowest Don Coryell's team had ever been ranked in total points scored. In other words, they were not the best ever, and not by a long shot. In fact, they might have been the worst offense of Don Coryell's career. Luther was back with the Chargers in 1984, and after Fouts had arthroscopic surgery at the end of the season, Luther got the start on the team's final three games. To be fair to Luther, he actually looked all right in those games, as even though the Chargers only went 1-2, Luther played well, throwing three touchdowns and no interceptions while averaging over 257 yards per game and posting a passer rating of 82.8, which was above the league average by more than six points. However, this would be the end of the road for Luther, as after the 1984 season, he never played in the NFL again. He played with the Jacksonville Bulls in the USFL in 1985, threw more picks and touchdowns, and never played professionally again after that. It's one thing to have confidence in your ability and in your teammates. In fact, you should have confidence in your teammates, especially if you're on the Chargers and have a stacked offense. But there's something hysterical about the backup quarterback, who had never thrown a touchdown pass up until this point, calling his team the greatest offense ever assembled, and then the offense completely sputtering the rest of the way. By the standards of backup quarterbacks, Ed Luther wasn't awful. You could do better, but you could do a whole lot worse. But 40 years later, no one's calling the 1983 Chargers the greatest offense ever and no one's remembering Ed Luther as the captain of the most explosive offense in NFL history. He got a bit too ahead of himself with those comments, and it backfired in hilarious fashion. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com, and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot, and be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9pm Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JRGator9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters who help get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.